Hi, I'm Coach Adam. In today's video, we're going to look at footwork and how that footwork is very important getting the right step, loading the correct leg, getting the racket in the right position, and then a critical landmark. You've heard me in my other videos talk about critical landmarks. So that you can assess yourself, the critical landmark is really the hips today. And we're gonna look at how the hips rotate at the completion of the swing. And if your hips are in the right position, you know your footwork was in the right position. So let's take a look. I've got some interesting little drills we're gonna start out with, things that you can do at home. And then we're gonna go from there. We'll look at some video clips of myself where we apply each one of these uh, steps that we're gonna work on. And uh, if you like these videos, hit that subscribe button down below. So the first thing we need to do is look at the solitary position and step and you need to create a box you need to create a box one two three four little zones here one two three four and if you've looked at my shadow swing uh, videos you see this in action and basically what we're going to be looking at i'm going to do this from the other side in a second here is that the side the ball is coming so this is my forehand side so you're seeing it opposite i'll turn around in a sec here if my racket goes out my right leg goes out and i'm just going to practice that stepping from this square this box there's one two three four boxes here into this square and i'm going to do that over and over again this position right here is key this happens everywhere on the court, no matter how you get to the ball, that happens again and again. And what you do afterward is really important depending on how you've stepped and getting the hips rotating forward. So let's look at that again here. I'm just stepping into that box. The racket, my right arm, my right leg are connected. There it is on the forehand side. As I step, and sometimes I tell my students, pretend you're stepping on a bug. As you're running to that bug and you've stepped on it, that racket has to be back. Let's look at it on the backhand side. So two hand, as I go out, my racket is here. This is just a load. This isn't the completion of the swing on the backhand, but this position is necessary. Here it is with a two hand. Here it is with a one hand. Look how similar that is left leg and racket and in a second you're going to see some video clips of me doing that i'll slow it down but it'll be in live action so you can see how it occurs but now we need to look at what are the other steps that occur here after that load and let me turn the uh, camera around i'm going to back you up a little bit So let's look at this again. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do that real simple load here. Simple load. And let's say the ball is coming right at me. Right leg and racket. I step forward with my left leg now into the next step. The step right, or the box right above. Right leg and racket, step forward. There's my swing. My hips have turned forward into my shot. That's the last thing that occurs at the completion of my swing. Right leg and racket, step forward and swing. Now, again, this position happens everywhere on the court. Even if I have to reach for a ball and I'm crossing over with my left leg first, the completion of the swing, there's my hip leg out here I've come to it racket in right leg but the ball is far out I'm stepping into the ball I complete it with my right leg but look again my hip has come through all right let's look at that at a ball that maybe is pushing me back all right I'm coming out and my hips are looking that way I'm gonna actually step back with my left leg this time to open up my hips. So there already we have three exercises. We're going to be stepping over with the right leg, stepping forward, 
stepping over to the right leg, left leg, and then we're gonna be stepping forward with the right. It's a completely different way or position that I'm gonna to have to get to the ball to get there. Stepping out with the right, there's that same load, but now I'm gonna step back with my left leg to help rotate my hips. The hips are the landmark. The hips are what need to be facing that direction after I hit. Let's look at an example where that failed. Here is the step over with the left leg and I cross over. I can't get my hips to rotate. The completion of my swing is impaired at that point. So again, if I'm stepping over with my left leg and I don't let that right leg come around, I'm getting jammed i can't rotate my body into the shot again this position here i'm loading i can step forward with my left my right leg comes through if my right leg goes out and my left leg goes because i'm reaching for a ball i'm not lined up with it yet again load accessory step before i swing and then the right leg has to go through Maybe I'm coming in with the side step. There it is. I've loaded before I hit. I've loaded and I'm coming back. I'm pushing off. That's on the forehand side. On the backhand side, let's look at that with the one hand. So I'm, here's my load, but I'm gonna use that accessory step, that step forward when the right leg goes forward to the ball, the racket goes back. Now, if you saw my video on the backhand, and beginning to understand the backhand, you have to eliminate the footwork to a point because it's all arm striking the ball. It's all arm striking the ball at that point to learn the contact point. That's the key to avoid doing this. In, with a backhand. The backhand is all about arm only and after you get that then we advance the swing into stepping and rotating with the left leg. So here we go we're going out with a left leg there's that landmark that happens on every shot I have to get here. Right leg goes forward that brings the racket back and then if you're just beginning it's just arm. What you're gonna see in the video is the next step, and this step here that I'm gonna show you. Left leg and racket, the racket goes back with the right leg, and then as I swing to complete the swing, my arm can't go any further, my left leg has to come through. There's the hip, there's the hip coming for forward, looking into my shot. If it's advanced, you're going to see it lift and come through. And you'll see that in the video. Uh, when there's momentum behind it, you actually get a nice lift. If it's not necessary, you're thinking left leg and racket, that's the same landmark as right leg and racket. So here we go again. Left leg and racket, step forward as you swing. That left leg has to come through to allow the racket to rotate. But remember in my other video, if you want to look at backhands, go back and, and look at that beginning step where you're hitting the ball backwards to the ball. You're swinging this way and that's going to help you make uh, the right contact before you start stepping forward with that bat leg. If you don't learn that, you end up chopping. Chop, 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 chop. So what are the exercises that we can be doing to move to a ball before we get to that landmark. And the real easy one is two things that we're gonna incorporate. First, lots of sidestepping. Lots of sidestepping, side step, side step, side steps. There we go. And then we're gonna do a crossover side step, crossover side step. If I'm backing away, it's an under crossover. If I'm going forward, it's an over crossover. Now, I don't need to do more than one or two crossovers ever, ever, ever at it. I'll show you something <clears throat> that gets a little bit misunderstood. And this is the way that I teach the split step 
And in all honesty, I don't teach the split step because it gets very confusing with my beginning players when to do it. Instead, I tell them the first step. What is the first step? And the first step is a crossover step. And I know a lot of you right now are kind of rolling your eyes going, wait a minute, that doesn't sound right. But let's look at it and let me see if I can help you clarify that first step. So if I did a split step, what I'm doing is I'm loading my legs so that I can react whatever direction I want to go. So if I do a split step before, and it should be I'm coming forward, my weight is coming forward as I do that split step to react to the ball. If I take a step, a genuine step, you know, there's going to be little tiny adjustments here and there, but the first genuine step, if I take it with, I'm going to my forehand side, if I take it with my right leg out, where's my weight? My weight is on the left leg pushing that way. Some of you say, well, oh, yeah, that, that should be right. I'll show you why that's wrong in a sec here. But if I do that and I cross over, where is my force coming from? It's the right leg on this side as I cross over. It's helping me thrust myself in that direction. Think of runners and they're at the starting gate. The, the foot you're going to push off from is the front foot and the back leg is the first actual step. Well, let's look at that again then. So here we are, split step. Here I am, I'm basically a runner on the running block. The first step is a crossover step with the left. And if I back up here, you can kind of see the distance that I can cover. Come forward a little bit, I think I'm out of camera. But I do my split step, boom. I've covered a tremendous amount of court. And what happened when I did it that way? crossover step, right leg and racket. There's that load. That is the load we were talking about in the very beginning that's all so important. Here we go. Crossover step, boom. There's the load with the backhand. If I'm one-handing it, then I'm gonna step and through. So I hope that kind of clarifies when I'm teaching the split step I don't like to teach the split step initially to my students. It gets a little confusing when to do it. As they advance, you can do the split step. That's the load before you go. But the first step, there may be a little tiny step. That doesn't count. The first genuine step in the direction you want to go is a crossover step. And the reason is, just like a runner on a running block, it's that leg that's pushing you off into the direction. The back leg is the one that doesn't have the pressure and it's leading you forward. So now we're gonna look at that crossover step and that load. So here we are, crossover step load. If I need to go further, crossover step side step. Now I'm loaded, that side step kept the load on the right hand side. On the backhand side, crossover side step, there I am. Forehand side, crossover side step. That's where we begin. The exercise that you're going to work on is that crossover side step. And you understand why now. You understand that on the split step after, it's not the right leg stepping first. You're going to get a little pivot, but you're going to step with a crossover step. And that's going to advance you into the position you need to be in. Right leg steps. That right leg's got to go over the line. Yes. Right leg. Correct. That's it. Okay, let's take a look at those in uh, real time. Uh, some examples that I have, you're gonna be looking at my footwork, how I apply it in the different directions, and the landmark, the hips, the completion of the swing, the hips should be turning in the direction of my shot before my feet recover and then move on to the next shot.
So you got a chance to look at my footwork. Now let's move on a little bit and I'm going to give you a, uh, a, a, an example of how to get to a ball that is far from you and in front of you. You're making your charge at it and footwork really is just run and go. This is all about keeping the racket in front of you. The racket pulls you. It's like a dog on a leash. It's pulling me along until I reach the ball. And I want to think about striking the ball with the end of my racket as I'm approaching it. Continental grip is best if you're on the stretch. If you can get there in time, you can use any other uh, grip that you want if you're going to be aggressive. But if it's a desperation shot, Continental is best. Again, it's going. you're going to see in this example, it pulls you all the way to the ball where I can get down as low as possible, where I can get under the ball to hit it up. Continental, again, I prefer for those desperation low, low balls because of the angle of the racket. Eastern, the racket's looking down. Semi-Western, the racket's really looking down. Western, oh man, it's going to be really hard to pick any ball up with that. So Continental, to get to that really, really far desperation shot and getting the racket down under the ball. And it's just run, 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 run. The racket's gonna tell you when to stop. So let's take a look at that. Okay, and the last thing that I'm going to leave you with is a compliment to my last video where we talked about the point of contact for topspin. And maybe it makes more sense if we don't just call it topspin, but we call it forward spin. The ball is moving forward. And I've taken one of my balls and I've drawn my arrow on the ball. Now, if the ball, get over here on my forehand side, if the ball is the core my arm is, it's out to the side, it's kind of that, I call this the armchair position, it's very comfortable. I'm going to be striking the ball at a vertical topspin contact point. Now, anything lower as it drifts down incrementally, I'm going to be contacting the ball at an angle top spin or forward spin position. As it becomes lower and lower, and you're going to see this in the examples, it's going to be on a greater degree of angle for contact. If here I am in that harm chair position and the ball is higher than that, look where that arrow is. My contact and the path of my racket now is in that direction for my forward spinning tar top spin ball. It's not here anymore. The con point of contact and the brush, if you want to call it the brush, is here. And let's consider a ball that is quite high. Look at how I have to come across that ball to strike it. I am not trying to create a top spin with a ball that's that high over me. I'm going this direction. So incrementally, armchair, anything lower, my contact point is that direction, armchair is straight over. If I'm coming up above, it's got to be across the ball. So let's look at some examples of that.
Okay, I've left you with a lot. And uh, we'll just recap really quick. That step right there is critical. It happens everywhere on the court in one form or another. The landmark you're looking at, your hips, have they turned in the completion of the swing? I don't teach split step. I'm talking about a crossover step first, the first genuine step in the direction you're going. The ball strike, top spin ball strike, and uh, if you're chasing down a ball, the racket leads and pulls you towards the ball. Now that was a lot to go over. You do have some exercises that you can apply that you saw in the beginning of the video. They seem simple. Um, it, it's important. The next part of all this is learning to be very light on your feet. And one of the easiest ways to learn to be light on your feet, jump rope. Get yourself a jump rope. If you have bad knees, get on the grass. But jump rope is keeping you light on your feet. And you saw that in my videos as I was striking the ball, how often I actually came up off of the ground. Okay, that's it for today. If you like this video, please hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, comments, questions. I love to hear back from you. If you have, um, if you want any kind of clarification, please let me know. And I uh, hope you enjoy this and I'll see you in the next video.